Welcome to Meet the Bloggers. I am your host, Jank Uger. We've got another great show ahead for you guys. Uh, you know, we just had the vice presidential debate yesterday. Yeah. Say it ain't so, Joe. Please. Jesus. All right. Now we got 32 days left of the campaign, uh, for the campaign, and we got other important issues and unanswered questions. One of those is McCain's health records. He has not released them. Over a thousand pages in health records, and he just had a hand pick set of uh, d uh, reporters go in there for three hours. That's about 18 pages a minute, if they could read them that fast. And uh, Dr. Sanjay Gupta even said that uh, he couldn't tell if there were missing parts of the files when he was in there for CNN. So it's a very important issue. It's one we're going to discuss today. And to help us discuss that, uh, we had Jonathan Kim, who you guys know from the live blog and his previous appearances on Meet the Bloggers, discuss this with one of the top experts in the country, Dr. Richard Sagabill, he's the co-director of the Melanoma Clinic at the University of California in San Francisco. He's had 30 years of experience in this field, and here's what he had to say about John McCain's health. So, Dr. Sagabill, thank you so much for being on Meet the Bloggers. My pleasure, thank you. So, could you tell me, in your opinion, why is it so important for presidential records to fully disclose their health records? I think it's important because if there's limitation to the transparency of anybody's health records, it always raises the suspicion, the suspicion, what are they hiding? And, and usually one's uh, imagination of what they're hiding may be greater than, than the actual facts of the, um, of the reports themselves. To me, of course, as a pathologist, the most important part of the record would be the pathology report, the initial report, and any consultations which were made uh, and who they were made by. What do they need to know about melanoma? Why is it so serious? It's a, a cancer like breast cancer or colon cancer. Uh, it has the possibility of spreading. Uh, where it spreads is commonly in, in uh, internal organs, which of course is very dangerous uh, from the point of view of treatment and survival. Uh, melanoma commonly goes to the brain. Uh, it can go to the liver and be very difficult to treat in that organ. It can go to the lungs and so on. So that uh, its potential for metastasis is, is uh, actually predictable in large part based on both clinical and pathologic features. And in this case, for example, one of the a most dangerous ages and uh, locations for melanoma tumors happens to be uh, older men from the head and neck area. A concern that I've heard from, from a lot of people uh, around this whole issue is that uh, people are very uncomfortable about the idea of someone's medical records being released to the public. Um, yeah, I think an average person obviously wouldn't want it to happen to them. Um, but could you speak to people who have those kind of concerns and who see this as, as very much a privacy issue? If physicians were allowed to review pertinent parts of his record, and I think most general physicians or oncologists would be uh, perfectly capable of evaluating that. And then the pertinent aspects could be released without, uh, I think, without much danger. And, and as I said originally, the fact that it is being hidden suggests to me, and I'm sure to others, that it's being hidden for a reason or restricted for a reason. Because I would personally think that at this point, the best thing that John McCain could uh, do would be to release at least, say, the original pathology slides to a melanoma expert who could then evaluate the attributes that we do in 2008 with the slide from 2000 and be able to predict with a pretty good degree of accuracy the probabilities of the next four years uh, met, uh, metastases from that original melanoma. Would that really affect memory and cognitive skills uh, if that happened, if there was a, a brain metastasis? Commonly, well, I would think of also brain tumors. I'm, uh, I'm thinking of Senator Ted Kennedy, uh, who had a, a rather large and, and malignant tumor, as I understand it, with very few symptoms until the end. And then I guess it was headaches and, and uh, other brain metastases or tumors will produce uh, seizures, and, and there's a whole host of symptoms that might occur, but it's always been amazing to me how our patients with brain metastases from melanoma 
might have eight or ten nodules, separate foci of of uh, of metastases in the brain, with very few, uh, if any, symptoms, and it can be picked up with some vision loss or some headaches, unexplained headaches, and so on. So that it's remarkable how how much can go on cognitively in terms of memory loss or in terms of tumor before it's really uh, perceived, and then it becomes an immediate emergency. Sort of going away from cancer for a second, I mean, he would be the oldest first-term president in American history. Um, I don't, uh, regarding his age, what are some things that people need to know about a man his age, especially in, in such a high-pressure, high-stress job like the presidency? Uh, I can tell you from personal experience about age, and uh, age is something where Disease happens, cancers happen, heart attacks happen. There are uh, there are a number of things that uh, happen at at an age past seventy years, and I think those are all things which can be evaluated to a certain extent on physical exams. But we also uh, know of uh, many patients who walk out of an annual examination given a clean bill of health and and have a heart attack on the on the steps of the hospital. So it's, uh, it's, it's very unpredictable, but it is predictable to say that increasing age causes increasing potential for any kind of uh, disease or cancer. Well, Dr. Sagabiel, thank you so much for your time. I think that we've all really learned a lot, and I think we all have a, a much better understanding of, of why it is so important that, uh, that John McCain's health records uh, be released. So, so thank you so much for, for being with us today. You're quite welcome. I appreciate your asking. And I'm Jonathan Kim for Meet the Bloggers.